Hello, hello, Crafty Crandall fam. Today I thought that I would film just some fun with watercolor, a beginner tutorial. So one of my favorite things to paint with watercolor is sunsets. I love a good sunset scene, so I figured that I would go through my process in a very regimented manner for any beginner to follow along so that you too can paint beautiful sunsets with watercolor. So without any further ado, let's hop in. First, let's talk about materials. For this video, I will be using a sketchbook. You can use any watercolor paper. I do recommend that you have a watercolor specific paper for this as it will buckle with the amount of water that we're going to use if it's not. I then have my watercolor brushes. I'm going to start from the largest and you'll see me work down as the tutorial progresses. I have some masking tape. You can use any type of masking tape that you happen to have. Mine just happens to be purple because it's my favorite color. Then finally onto the watercolors. Again, you can use any set of watercolor that you have. I'm going to use my trusty dusty Sennelier watercolors as these are my favorite. And I just love this range specifically for sunsets because there are so many options here. I have obviously two cups of water here, so I use two cups so that when one of my brushes is dirty, I first swirl it around one cup, then the other one. So I always have this one relatively clean because most of the cleaning occurs in this one, and then I don't have to change my water pretty much ever. The first thing that we're going to do is go ahead and tape our paper down. I am just going to tape along the edges, but you can do any surface that works with your reference or if you're following along with my reference. This is a photo of a sunset that I took in Asheville, North Carolina in one of the mountains. And so you can go ahead and follow along with me if you're interested and we will create the same sunset. I have done so many sunset paintings and to be honest, they all kind of look the same <laughs> in a way because it's basically the same process each time. However, there are so many details and fun things that you can add and compositional elements that you can use to make your sunsets more interesting. I highly recommend you giving this a try. Now that I've got this taped down, one more thing I'm going to do because I am working in a sketchbook is I'm going to binder clip the edges so that they can't move. This is again important because of the buckling of the paper and if you have binder clips or any type of clip lying around, I do highly recommend doing this. All right, now one of the keys to making a really nice sunset is you're going to have to work really quickly in your first couple of layers because you're going to be working with the wet on wet technique. That means you're going to want to mix all of your colors in advance and you're going to want to have your water ready and you're going to want to have a large brush because the first step here is going to be just to paint this entire surface with plain clean water and then take all of your pre-mixed colors and start creating this gradient. So let's jump in. For the colors you'll want a light yellow, a darker yellow, an orange, a really desaturated purple, and a really desaturated dark green. All right, I have wet my paper with clean water, and I just wanted to kind of try to demonstrate how wet you want your paper. So at this point, it's almost a little bit too wet. You don't want any visible pooling of water. And so if that happens to you, what you can do is you can take a dry brush and just go over the top of it if you have any pools of water. And then once you think that the paper is at a good state, so no visible pools, but still pretty wet, that's when you're going to start taking your colors and forming the layers of the painting. So just the first initial lightest layers of color to block in where, you know, your features are going to be. I also have here just a little um, paper towel so that throughout the process, if I need to use it for anything, I have it because there are some like stark whites in my reference. And so I'm going to want to use this to blot out some of the initial yellow color in the top. I start by simply adding the lightest yellow color very lightly to the top of the painting. This is very watered down and is just aiming to get the initial colors blocked in for the painting. 
you'll notice that the glare of the water there is some pooling so I clearly uh, have some buckling going on and didn't really control the water as well as I necessarily should have but you can combat this in a multitude of ways you can take a dry brush and kind of sap some of it off you can take that paper towel that I mentioned and kind of get some of the excess water off you can wait for it to dry and buckle and fix it afterward or you can ignore it like I do because this is not going to be a perfect painting. You want to keep this super loose if possible. And personally, I think that that makes a sunset just look better. You see me now going in with a dry brush to try to take some of the yellow off, both to get rid of the pooling and also to maintain some of the lines that you can see in the initial painting. And then add the orange back in for the soft clouds that you can see in the reference. I've got a small brush with a clean bit of water and I'm just going to rake that down the side of this for the sunburst. I'm not going to create the sunburst yet, but I'm going to just block out where it is going to be so that I know <laughs> in the composition of the painting. All right, so that's where that's going to be and then they'll have some backscattering there, but um, now I've got that and I'm going to let this completely dry. The painting is now completely dry. I used a hairdryer. You can use a hairdryer or like a heat tool if you have it, or you can just wait until it dries. Um, it'll take probably, I don't know, half an hour, an hour. I don't have time for that. So <laughs> I used a hairdryer. Now we're going to start to block in some of the mountains. So we've got basically our final row of mountains right here. I can try to block them in a little bit more with some harsher lines, maybe just that part of the mountains. And then we will take a darker version of the purple here, a darker version still here and here, and then the darkest version just here in the middle. So that is what we're going to do next. And then we'll do the trees after that. There is no exact science to this. You can choose to be as close to or as far away from the reference as you want as far as likeness and following it to the structure of the actual mountains in the background. Between each layer of mountains, I am going to go back in with my hair dryer and make it completely dry. You also saw that from my palette, I had a bit of the orange creep into my purple. And so I'm not too concerned about it because this is all going to get covered up with a darker shade anyway. Um, but should that happen to you, you can try to smudge it out like I did. Or you can take a blotting paper and just blot it out and bring this color back down. No big deal. What we are going to do next is form the rest of the mountains. So I am taking a slightly more saturated color for the next mountain down and I'm just bringing that across and then we'll fill in the bottom with the rest of the color. I will then let this completely dry 100% and then do this exact process again a little bit further down for the next mountain that is closer to us in the scene. You get darker as you get closer to the foreground and a little bit more pronounced as far as the details of the mountain are concerned. You see that I didn't really like the color, so I went back and just added more color to it. That's no big deal. And then just continue forward, making sure to continue to pull the color down where necessary. I then go back in with yet another darker color and again end up having to add some more color to it. Again, no big deal. You'll notice if you're looking at the reference yourself that my colors are far more saturated than the reference. Again, this is a personal choice. And then I use a clean brush to form the sun flare yet again, taking the clean wet water. All right, at this point, I'm going to try to do some of the trees. For the most part, the trees are gonna be a two part process, two layers. One lighter layer, but still dark. And then one like really dark layer for the very foreground. So that's the plan. And then we will add the sun streak and we should be good. I am using the same brush for the trees that I used for the mountains. And for the most part, I'm gonna start with just a flat wash here on the bottom because that'll all get covered up with a darker color. Anyway, 
<laughs> and then I'm going to start to kind of just make it more clear that these are in fact trees up at the top. Now I've already run out of the color I mixed, which isn't necessarily a good thing because then I'll end up with multiple colors, but honestly I think it'll be okay. Um, we will just fade in any other color that we mix to this, so it'll be fine. You then see that I completely take away all of that progress with the trees because I realized that I really needed the darker color in the background and wasn't going to achieve that without basically painting over what I had just done. So I retain my sun flare yet again, taking that same just plain water. And then I go back in with a much darker, more desaturated shade of green to get those trees back with the details and basically go over the entire bottom portion with kind of a stippling type effect with my brush. All right, the last step here is we're going to take our vibrant orange and we're going to paint the sun and we're going to paint um, just a little bit more in here to kind of bring it together with the ray of sunshine. And then I might go back through and add just a little bit more yellow, but for the most part, this is almost complete. The sun flare was definitely the hardest part of this. Um, I would say that if I were to go back and do it again, I would have done it a little bit differently. I probably would have tried to remove the paint um, from the completed image. I also would have made, as you see, uh, a better orange from the beginning. I would have tried to make the middle portion of the orange just slightly more, not saturated, but like darker. I wouldn't have faded it out with water so much. And then um, I probably wouldn't have added quite so much purple to this portion. I was trying to blend it out. And a great way to do this is literally just to add plain clean water which is what I should have done earlier when the orange was still wet so if you are doing this at home I highly recommend that you just use clean water don't add the purple back into your orange to try to fade that in because to be honest it didn't have the desired effect I then went back through and added some more color to my mountains because I realized that they just weren't colorful enough I wanted them to be a lot more colorful and saturated so I went back through and added more color uh, personally, I think that this looks better. The reference, obviously, in real life, it didn't quite look like this, but since this is a painting, I can convey it however I want, and I think that this, as a stylistic choice, just worked better. Please let me know if you think that that is also the case, as I would love to know. Please, if you do this tutorial, feel free to tag me on Instagram, at Crafty Crandall. I would love to see your results and love to see your paintings. I personally enjoy any type of sunset painting. I also have here for you the requisite tape peeling because we all love that here in the watercolor community. I hope that you had a very satisfying reveal and tape peeling as well during your painting. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you found this tutorial fun or informative please let me know down in the comments give this video a like if you liked it consider subscribing to my channel hitting that notification bell as all of those things help with the engagement on this channel thank you guys so much again i really appreciate it and i will catch you in the next one